Andreas today that you take me out of the way and help me to speak the word to my heart. Help me to make the statements of God in my life more clear to me all the more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing a new hymn to Yahweh. Let his praise resound from the ends of the earth. Let the sea and all that holds it sing his praises, the islands and those who inhabit him. Let the desert and the cities raise their voices. Let the inhabitants a shout from the mountaintop. Let them give glory to Yahweh. Please turn to hymn number 30. Let's stand. be seated. In ministry, May 1960, this was written. Tithing is a fundamental biblical teaching and the tithing system has enabled our denomination to fulfill its worldwide mission. But tithing also says something about our individual relationship with God. Seventh-day Adventist minister and writer Leroy of Frome tells us, true tithing is simply the symbol of utter consecration. It involves a new vision of relationships and values. It ushers in a new sense of accountability toward God and a new recognition of responsibility toward man. Today we return our tithes, God's tithe. We are reminded that it is important to the mission of the church. It also shows that we recognize we are accountable to God and have a responsibility toward others. This morning I invite you to return your tithes and give an offering for the conference advance. The offering will support the many programs throughout our conference. Thank you for giving. At this time, I invite our deacons to come forward and collect their tithes and offerings.
loving Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to return our tithes and an offering. We ask, Father, that you would bless these funds and cause them to go far and fit into your work. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we're, we're going to open the church up for those who would like to share a thanksgiving or offer a prayer request. Um, you know, a lot of our members are traveling. They're elsewhere. It's a holiday weekend, and so you have different people up on the, on the platform here, so bear with us. Uh, happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Praise Sabbath. the Lord. Um, I want to pray for my brother, Jermaine, the final place, and hopefully I'm going to pray for my ex-girlfriend that can accept them. And hopefully, maybe he could lead her to come here. And because uh, who knows, maybe that's what the Lord's planning. Also, I want to pray for my nephew, Dennis, who uh, needs all the love he could have. Mm -hmm. and where he's living, it's all anxieties and pins and needles. And I just wanted to see if my, you know, you know, he gets to love some. You know, I love him. If I had my way, he would be living with me. <laughs> but. I gotta obey my uncle's wishes, but I know I'm, what I'm just trying to say is I want to thank the Lord for bringing me here. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I want I I have a prayer request. Pray for the people who are in China to raise up a church. I want to thank the church for all the cards that they sent and the visits that were made and the phone calls and for the beautiful bouquet of flowers that they sent for the memorial service. Thank you all. I have a praise and a prayer request. My prayer request is for a co-worker who will be going into um, surgery on Wednesday. She's having... She has, she's been diagnosed with breast cancer, so they're going to remove both breasts and reconstruct. So I ask the church to pray not only for her, but also to the caretakers. Right, right. And my praise is, I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. He knows me. He knows me. He knows me. Amen. Sunday after going to Martha and Cleo, uh, my Martha's memorial, we drove up there. I drove home. I went shopping. I had to pick my granddaughter up at 11 o'clock that e night. I picked her up, but the car was just whizzing. I got home, I turned it off. Something says, turn it back on. I turned it on and it wouldn't turn over. The Lord knows if I was at a cliff, I'd pull that car over. I'd have pushed it over. But I thought it was the um, starter. But it turned out to be just a battery. Oh. So I didn't have to spend a lot of money on that. Amen. So I praise the Lord for letting the car not start in the driveway. And thank him for being your patience. I Anyone pray, else? I pray for the kids in Uganda who don't have shoes and that they can stop getting jiggers. Amen. Um, I have... I have a praise uh, this week for Traveling Mercies. Um, I, I don't know what it was this week of the cars and accidents, but um, I, I had an experience where um, uh, the situation, I didn't have time to break even. I had to swerve very fast. And uh, there was almost like immediately four cars that would have been affected severely in the situation. And the other car was behind was coming so fast, I just pulled all the way over. and. I've had a lot of close calls, but this one was so close, I just cried <laughs> on the side of the road because it was, it, it was almost really devastatingly bad, and I just thank God for his protection. Um, and then the, the, the next day, I was in another situation where I had to make a really hard stop and back up. And then a few minutes later on the road, I watched two cars that were directly ahead of me decide to merge into the same middle lane, one from the left, one from the right, decide to merge into the same spot in the middle lane at the very last second. 
they saw their error and they both corrected in such a way that an accident did not occur. So I don't know what was going on with vehicles this week, but I just praise the Lord for his angels <laughs> and his protection. Amen. 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 I, just, I just want to thank the Lord for traveling mercies for us being out of town last week. And I want to thank him for the traveling mercy that Joanna and the kids are away in Canada this weekend. I want you guys to pray for them for their safe return home. First, I'd like to praise the Lord for the gorgeous weather that we're having. Amen. Um, he has blessed us today. And then I'd like to ask for continued prayers for my friend Mary, whose house was, uh, I don't even know what, what to call it, uh, with the oil spill. She's been out of her house now for two months. Mm -hmm. And I just talked to her, and they're telling her it'll be another two months wow. at least before she can move back in because they found, uh, originally they were telling her it was a minor spill under 10 gallons. Now they're saying it was over 100. So she's, uh, they're jackhammering in her basement at the present time, uh, and they're taking soil out all over the place because it's contaminated. So if you would keep her in your prayers, it's very hard to live out of, out of a suitcase She's done it now for two months, and she's got two more months at least to go. Well done, well done. Anyone else? Happy Sabbath, church. Um, I just want to thank God for um, allowing me to come to church today, because lately I haven't been able to actually, like, get up and, you know, get the energy to come to church because of me being sick most of the time and throwing up past, like, the past couple of months, basically. But um, I'm just grateful that God's allowed me to come to church. Um, also, I asked you guys to pray for me. I recently took a test um, Thursday, and it's to help me get into this program so then I'll be able to um, become a midwife so then I can help give birth and everything. And we had, it was me and four other of uh, my classmates, we had to take the test to get into this program, and they said that they will let us know if we did good Tuesday because that's when we come back to school. But I'm confident that I did pretty good on the test because when I did the test, there were three parts. There was the reading and then there were two math like sections. And each time we did each one of them, I was the first one done and I felt confident. Like something just, it felt, I don't know what it was, but something drove me to just get it, not, not to just get it done, but like something told me, oh, you know this, like you're good, you're gonna get through this or anything. And I was just like thankful and everything. I had thank God that he allowed me to finish the test and everything like early and to even look over it like multiple times. But I just asked you guys to um, pray for me that I'm able like, to pass that test so then I'll be able to get into that program. Well done, well done. God is good. Happy Anybody Sabbath, else? church. I just want to thank the Lord for waking me up this morning and getting me through another week. And the Sabbath school lesson that I had today because today we were asked like a question and I gave the answer that my grandmother told me and I learned from that answer so that came in handy and I just want to ask the Lord to be with us because now I think we're down to 13 or 14 more days of school left and to be with the students who have to take their regents and everything and I want to thank God that I passed all my regents and that um that to prepare me for the next step. Amen. Well done. Well done. Thank God for grandparents. Anyone else? At this time, as we petition the throne of grace, I'd like to invite those who would like to come forward to kneel to do so. Transform my 
like you to bow your heads or kneel where possible. The the psalmist said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my prayer. He has put a new song in my heart. Praise to our God. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for inclining your ear to us, for listening to our prayers, to our praises, to our needs, to our cries, Father. Lord, we just ask that you be with us this day as we celebrate your Sabbath day. Father, you've heard the thanks and the praise for traveling mercies, for accidents that were avoided, for troubles with our cars that turned out to be simple problems. You've heard the prayers for tests that are going to be taken. You've heard the praises for blessings that you've poured down upon us in the, in the ways that <clears throat> we don't even know. You've heard the prayer requests for provisions for those that do not have the things that we have. Father, I'm thankful for the voices that have been lifted up today, not just in prayer, not just in supplication, Father, but for our children who are willing and have the confidence in you to lift up a prayer request, mm-hmm. that they they know that you will answer the prayer because they've asked it, Lord. Father, we want to thank you for those answered prayers. We want to thank you for those children, Lord, that have come into this church, that have been re- taught by their parents, that have been taught by the teachers here in this church to love you, to have faith and trust in you. Father, we want to lift up those that have needs of recovery, of healing from cancer, from other diseases, Father, from loss of loved ones, Lord. Father, we lift them up and we ask that you would just be with them. Be with the physicians that are going to be operating on, on Connie's friend this week. We pray, Father, that the whole staff at the hospital will have a blessing poured out upon them, that their wisdom, that the knowledge that you have given them, that they would provide the care that she needs, Father, to help to restore her body. Father, we want to lift up our speaker today. It's been a journey, Lord, a journey that started many years ago. We lift him up and we ask, Father, that you cover him with your Holy Spirit you anoint him, Father, with the words and the wisdom that you have given him. We pray, Father, that the words that come out of his mouth will be words that you have prepared for him, that the wisdom that comes from his thoughts are the wisdom that you have given to him, that everything that he speaks, every thought that he has would come from you, and that as he speaks them, Lord, that they would touch the hearts of those that you have prepared today. We know that no word is ever brought forth that does not touch someone. Mm-hmm. It may not touch me, it may not touch another person, Father, but, but it touches someone, someone who has a deep need in their life to hear this word, Father. And we ask that you just open their hearts and their minds. Father, we lift up this congregation and the mission that it has here. We pray that you would bless each and every member that's away, that you would give them traveling mercies. Father, we pray that as we ask these things in Jesus' name, that you would answer them according to your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, 
the scripture reading today will take place in Psalms 28, verses 6 and 7. Um, I get an amen when you guys get there. Okay. Blessed be the Lord, because, he's ha- because he has heard my voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I will be helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. thought of different ways of getting out of here, moving away without having to get up here and tell you any stories of what God's done to me and how I was going to just walk right out of here and keep God's good news to myself. God get these words out. Heavenly Father, I ask you again to just help me to speak the words you have me to speak and to show people who you are. Not just to explain the life you have for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. called 
the sermon would be the things I've seen. And I don't know if it comes from age or just taking on a new adventure in life, but God has been showing me this movie. started that I kept to myself that only I could see. Hopefully today I can give you a small picture of some of the things God is telling me. And if I were to write a sermon on who God is to me, I'd tell about how walking with God requires danger to me. I have to be accountable for my actions. That can cover a whole lot of different areas of life. It may all come down to how I treat others. But the changes don't stop. God, with God, changes are how we grow closer to him. If I were to write another sermon on who God is to me, I'd tell about the people God has shown me. Because time after time, he has had someone there for me. God has also shown me that he has people in this world that are help us along our walk. And if I am one of those people, I, am, I must accept people are where they are at. To allow God to change them is what God asks. I'm not here to tell you what you can or cannot do. God does that. God has shown me no matter how far life, this life can take you away from him, there's always a way back. he did it for me. And if I were to write another sermon, but I do not write, I would tell you about the struggles in the life of me and how God has carried me time after time. I left that area where I could Bill to tell you things about the things God has given me in life when all I had to do was follow some new a new person to a occupation that was just a dream. family and the love they've shown me has gotten me through some tough times and I thank God for that and if I were to write another sermon about who God is to me Talk about how God requires forgiveness in me. A level of forgiveness that only God supplies. Amen. Forgiveness of ourselves for failures. Forgiveness of others because God gave them a mind of their own. Even when you know you were right and you have a good reason not to forgive, God asks us to forgive Amen. with an eraser to blot it out like it never happened. 
because unforgiveness can cause us interference in our walk. It can put you in neutral. But forgiveness can set you free. If I were to write a sermon on who God is to me, I'd tell about the different levels of love God has shown me. I've always been interested in that word love and what it was all about. It's one of the greatest things I've known, thanks to God. He has all different levels of love for us to see. It's all up to us which ones we want to try. <clears throat> love of friends, love of family, love of the wife, of children, of grandchildren. They're all gifts from God. Amen. And just the different levels of love God shows us of who he is. And where he brings us from. If I were to write a, another sermon of who God is to me, I'd tell about this church that God has shown me, where God works, prayers are answered, miracles happen, and you can hear angels sing. It's a place to call home, a safe place to return to after a storm start your journey over when you could have been gone. And I figured I knew something about prayer and since we're doing prayer I should be able to tell you about it. In prayer I've seen that with just one answered prayer God can change a lifetime. Have you, have you ever thought about prayer in this way? For me, if it was only the one prayer God ever answered, it would have been enough. But included in that answered prayer could be the start of a walk. A walk with God. prayer God answered for me was such a life-altering event that I knew I was changed. You don't know how, you don't know why, but you agree to walk. A new journey, not knowing where it will take you, but you have an interest in finding out who God is. I was in my 20s when I asked God to take alcohol from that is the day God became very real to me when he answered my prayer instantly. That is where my movie starts. That's what always has kept me looking for more of who God is. And the thought of that first answered prayer is what gets me through some hard times I've had. God says he will take care of you very true. So along this journey, there's been a lot of changes to have to, had to take place, most all of them in me, some easier than others, but they've all brought me closer to God through prayer. I felt like I was alone sometimes in this process. My life had changed in a moment. Not sure anyone in my family thought I would ever change. All the friends I had were doing things I didn't want to do anymore. It was a strange time, but God brings us through. I ended up getting a 
apprenticeship job at a woodworking, architectural woodworking shop in Albany. I had been working on wood projects all my life. Now God has shown me a place where you could do it for a living. I loved this place and the things they would make. After four years, I started getting thoughts of doing this on my own. I would pray to God and talk to him about it mostly. And eventually he gave me enough courage to start one on my own. The only part of it I was good at was making the stuff. Everything else about business was all new to me. Maybe another answered prayer with all kinds of new things to learn about business and myself. It must have been another answered prayer because I really enjoyed the work I do. So to sum this all up, I've come to know God by trying to walk with him through life. I was never really involved in a church until I got here started another learning process. About who God really is. Where the things I've learned have made God even more real. In a world where there's not a whole lot of truth, God's truths are true. His truths are real. It has been almost 30 years since God answered that prayer. I haven't done anything perfect yet. What I can tell you is God supplied me with a life. From one answered prayer to another, God has given me an occupation and a wife, one of the greatest gifts and journeys I've had. God says you're going, again, God says you're going to have to make some changes to make this work. And again, we grow. Children, I really didn't have anything to do with them. I don't know how God worked all this out, but I have kids now. What I know is I enjoy spending the time I spend with them. I'm glad they've accepted me into their lives to be part of their family, to have more people to love. And grandchildren, I don't even know where to go with that one, but <laughs> this amazing. And then a new journey that would someday come, like the closing of a chapter in a book. God has shown me a movie to look back over to let me know everything will be all right. That I can have a confidence in what we are doing because of what God has already done. I can tell you story after story of how God has done things for me in my life, but it hasn't all been easy. Sometimes we struggle. But we got to know there's always a way back. There's always a way back. life that I can recall, I don't know what, I don't know. I'm completely satisfied with the life God has shown me. God is great, good, wonderful. when we're not.
sermon, but I can keep going. I see the place we're moving to to be where God wants us. Where I get to spend time with family and grandchildren. And I look forward to running around and playing with them. I have a ball. I look forward to seeing what God has in store for us there. Actually, we don't actually know what we're going to do. So basically, I'm telling you, God says what he says, and he means what he says, and it'll all work out if you follow him. Even through the struggles, he, somehow. Some of them struggles bring you the closest I've ever been. So I just want to thank God today for all he's given me. All the love he's shown, the people he's put in my life, the family that I have. I just thank God. Amen. Turn to him number 44. Shall we stand? Glory to him whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory be to him 
from generation to generation. In the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Glory be to him who can keep you from falling and bring you safe to his glorious presence, innocent and happy. To God, the only God, who saves us through Jesus Christ our Lord, be the glory and majesty, authority and power which he had before time began, now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.